genital tuberculosis now clinical features can be one of these the most common is infertility due to sequelae recurrent miscarriages topic pregnancy recurrent miscarriages due to endometrial involvement or uh, ectopic pregnancy due to tubal pathology uh, due to tuberculosis menstrual irregularities again due to endometrial involvement chronic pelvic pain and uh, adnexal mass and uh, there may be history of a previous tuberculosis infection elsewhere like lungs which may give a clue now coming to the male genital tract the spread is hematogenous and the primary site of involvement is epididymis with the contiguous spread to other areas of the genital tract by direct spread now clinical presentation can be acute symptoms of prostatitis or it is more more commonly non specific urinary symptoms and subfertility is uh, 10% of subfertility is due to tuberculosis now when a patient uh, presents with acute uh, symptoms of prostatitis you the prostate may be normal or it can reveal focal areas of decreased echogenicity as shown here which is again non specific you have to go by other features we will come to that later now here this patient presents with uh, again acute symptoms of um, urinary symptoms and uh, pelvic pain and uh, there is an abscess in the prostate either with or without uh, periprostatic collection there is abscess in the prostate with a periprostatic collection so this uh, again can be non specific but there will be acute symptoms will not be there in tuberculosis or more chronic uh, uh, features will be there a very rare uh, complication of uh, prostatic tuberculosis is a fistulous tract to perineum like we saw fistulous tract from perineum freak space to the skin and we can see in scrotum like that here also there can be a fistulous tract to perineum or a ano urethral fistula now here this is a transrectal scan of prostate you see a gas in the prostate so then you do a sagittal scan you see that gas is actually in the prostatic urethra so that is the prostatic urethra so you see gas in the prostatic urethra and when you do uh, the transrectal scan and they withdraw the probe you see the tract in the prostatic urethra gas filled and it extends to this is the anal canal and you see the tract extending to the anal canal because it's uh, typical of an ano urethra fistula this is the real time scan showing the pressure and release the gas in the tract moving so that is the uh, prostatic urethra this is the anal canal and you see the air, air filled tract from the prostatic urethra to the anal canal so ano urethral fistula due to tuberculosis there can be sequel of uh, tuberculosis of the prostate resulting in infertility so the infertility may be due to atrophy of the ducts or it may be due to stricture of the ejaculatory ducts which will which is a cause of obstructive azoospermia uh, uh, in about 4 to 9% of cases and on ultrasound you may see the features in the scrotum this is the epididymis you see the tubules uh, are dilated minimally and more moderate dilatation of the tubules of the epididymis causing honeycomb appearance and there may be an epididymal uh, cyst seen here and or in the testis there can be ectasia of reti testis as seen here ectasia of reti testis on you may see dilated seminal vesicles because of obstruction to ejaculatory ducts so either all or one of these features may be seen in obstruction to ejaculatory ducts and again this show tells you that it is due to obstruction whether it is due to tuberculosis it depends on the history and uh, previous diagnosis and other features of uh, tuberculosis elsewhere now coming to uh, the sequelae of uh, uh, tuberculosis of the prostate um, it can lead to dystrophic calcifications so you may see dystrophic calcifications in the prostate which is again a non specific feature now coming to the scrotal tuberculosis the patients will present with pain and swelling or it may be insidious and chronic symptoms 
Now, tuberculous epididymis, one of these uh, features may be present. It may be diffusely enlarged, heterogeneously hypoechoic epididymis. The whole epididymis is enlarged. Or you may get nodular heterogeneous hypoechoic lesions in the epididymis. Or it may be diffusely enlarged and homogeneously hypoechoic. Or there may be an abscess mimicking a pyogenic infection, most commonly in the tail or there may be a scrotal abscess and a scrotal sinus. Now here you see diffusely enlarged heterogeneously hypoechoic epididymis and when you put color you see there is no flow in the lesions but there is hyperemia around the epididymis in the periphery. So that is a very typical feature of uh, tuberculosis. Here you see uh, a nodular heterogeneous hypoechoic lesion in the epididymis with the cavitation and um, uh, or without cavitation and again color shows hyperemia around it. Now here you see the entire epididymis is enlarged and uh, homogeneously hypoechoic. So that is the entire epididymis which is enlarged and hypoechoic. And here you see uh, the tail of epididymis, there is an abscess, there is a mass with central abscess and so that is abscess in the tail of epididymis. Uh, and here you see um, a scrotal wall abscess. This is the uh, enlarged tail of the epididymis. There is an abscess in the scrotal wall. So this is uh, both will mimic a pyogenic infection, but the patient may not have acute symptoms. So this, uh, the abscess in the tail of epididymis, it can be the starting point. Then it can rupture yes, and appear as a scrotal wall abscess which is can again rupture through the skin outside as a, with a tract, a fresh tract which is very thick or it may be a chronic uh, tract. You can see from the tail of epididymis a tract extending to the skin. So scrotal sinus is a very characteristic uh, feature of tuberculosis. Now testicular tuberculosis is again a varied appearance. You may get an enlarged testis with multiple small hypoechoic nodules as seen here. There may be hydrocele. A very typical feature is blurred separation of between testis and epididymis in the region of the mediastinum. So this is testis with uh, nodules and this is epididymis which is enlarged and you see a mass there. So in between there is no uh, separation, good separation. So that is a very good feature. And here the testis is enlarged and uh, there is, uh, it is homogeneous or heterogeneous hypoechoic structure and that is again we must suspect tuberculosis. Now this is another case of tuberculosis, you see larger ecopore masses in the testis, there is hydrocele and you see um, a mass in the tail of epididymis and uh, on the right side you see the entire epididymis is enlarged and ecopore indicating tuberculosis. Now another case of uh, testicular tuberculosis, it looks like multiple abscesses in the testis and on uh, Doppler you see no flow in the lesions but there is hyperemia of the rest of the testis. But what is the clue for tuberculosis is the thickened um, uh, vas deferens here. So that is uh, in favor of tuberculosis. Now tuberculosis uh, can be seen in the vasa differentia a single or multiple hypochoic masses in the vas. Now here this is just um, a mass, irregular mass in the uh, spermatica just above the testis yeah, and here you see the vas deference which is thickened and there is a focal necrotic mass in the vas deference. Another other cases of tuberculosis of the vas deferentia, you see a, um, a market thickening of the uh, vas uh, deference with focal increased thickening in the long axis and the short axis and hyperemia on color Doppler. And another case of uh, tuberculosis, you see the marked thickening of the focal thickening of the vas deference in longitudinal scan and uh, short axis scan. Now coming to tuberculosis of the seminal vesicles, it can present as uh, a heterogeneous mass or it can present as an abscess. So this um, feature is again non-specific, it cannot be differentiated from uh, pyogenic uh, abscess, but uh, the evidence of tuberculosis elsewhere uh, in the urinary tract or in the scrotum or uh, chronicity of symptoms give, should give rise to the suspicion and a biopsy or aspiration from the abscess 
will uh, give the diagnosis. Of course, uh, the absent uh, acute symptoms will be absent. Now, coming to tuberculosis of uh, seminal vesicle and vasa differentia, the fibrosis and healing results in C. coli, which results in a very small solid atrophic seminal vesicle, as I seen here, or it can result in calcifications as seen in both seminal vesicles or calcifications in the vas deferens, which are all features which are non-specific. Now, differential diagnosis of uh, the tuberculosis of male genital tract, uh, we have to depend on the chronicity of symptoms, presence of a sinus tract and lack of response to non-specific antimicrobial agents should give rise to suspicion and of course uh, evidence of tuberculosis in the rest of the genitourinary system and last is a biopsy. Confirmation is by urine smear and culture or biopsy of the lesion which is seen either in the prostate, seminal vesicle, epididymis or test is wherever it is seen. So that is the confirmatory test for tuberculosis. Now we pass on to tuberculosis of the female genital tract. Now this is uh, spread is hematogenous and the primary site is fallopian tube with contiguous spread to rest of the female genital tract. Tuberculosis of the fallopian tube, um, it is seen in more than 90% of uh, tuberculosis of female genital tract. It can present as endosalpingitis where the tube, fallopian tube will be swollen and edematous or exosalpingitis where uh, there will be features of ascites, miliary tubercles on the serosa uh, which will be seen as um, irregular contour of the tube and result in additions. Later with uh, fibrosis it may result in hydrosalphings, tube ovarian mass or tube ovarian abscess which may be the features. And later on because of the fibrosis and obstruction and destruction there may be, it can result in infertility. Now tuberculosis of the ovaries is less 20%. It, uh, the, again, the pathology is caseation, adnexal mass and uh, TO abscess. Uh, destruction of the entire ovarian tissue can result in premature ovarian failure, which will result in premature menopause or infertility. So there is a wet type of um, tuberculosis of the female tract with the involvement of the peritoneum, where you will see ascites as seen here and um, uh, peritoneal thickening and you will see um, septae, incomplete septae due to fibrin strands and echogenic uh, particles and uh, uh, the fallopian tubes may be thickened as seen here. Both the fallopian tubes are thickened uh, as seen in the transverse scan. And uh, another case where you see ascites and uh, you see the marked thickening of the fallopian tube. You see the ovary here, that is the fallopian tube markedly thickened. And another case of wet type of tuberculosis, you see ascites and you see the fimbrial end of uh, the fallopian tubes on both sides markedly thickened, varying appearance. I am showing different cases. Another case, you see uh, the right fallopian tube thickened, left fallopian tube thickened and uh, there is ascites and there is peritoneal thickening on the fallopian tube itself. I can here see the fallopian the tuberculosis uh, nodules and uh, uh, thick fallopian tube. You can see also see fibrin strands in the ascitic fluid. Very characteristic of the wet type of tuberculosis. This is the video showing the uh, markedly thickened right fallopian tube, left fallopian tube and uh, that is the fallopian tube and you see the fibrin strands in the ascitic fluid. That is the fibrin strands. Very typical of tuberculosis. Now another case where uh, you see the sagittal skin of the uterus and you see the obliteration of peritoneal recesses due to peritoneal thickening as you hear this is the bladder, this is the uterus. So vesico-uterine recess is obliterated and you see the peritoneal thickening. Ascites that is the peritoneal thickening obliterating the recess and peritoneal thickening here in the pelvis and you see the thick fallopian tube. So that is uh, tuberculosis of the fallopian tube. This is the video showing the obliteration of the vesicouterine recess by a dynamic scan. There is uh, no uh, sliding of the bladder wall due to adhesion. And uh, the tuberculous pyosalphings, uh, you see the markedly thickened uh, uh, fallopian tube and uh, you see uh, ascites 
by the side and in cross section also you see markedly thickened fallopian tube with internal distension of the lumen with uh, debris and when you do color doppler you see intense hyperemia of the walls so this is tuberculous pyosalfix patient will not be having any acute symptoms and you can see the real time uh, dynamic movement of the debris in the fallopian tube indicating that it is pus pyosalfix there is dry type of uh, tuberculosis of the female genital tract where there is no ascites but there is peritoneal thickening as shown here this is the ovary and um, you may see uh, fallopian tube uh, the thick walls or you may see hydrosalfing now here you see the markedly thickened fallopian tube uh, or you may see uh, uh, the that is again markedly thickened fallopian tube on color doppler there is hyperemia so there is no ascites so this is called a frozen pelvis so when they open up they may not be able to enter the pelvis because of dense adhesions that is frozen pelvis in the right type of uh, tuberculosis of the female genital tract and peritone another case of um, uh, dry type of uh, tuberculosis you see the markedly thick on right fallopian tube while on the left side there is a uh, hydrosalfings you can see the hydrosalfings of the markedly thick walled fallopian tube so this is the varying appearance now this is the video of the same patient you see the markedly thickened fallopian tube on right side and the thick walled tube with hydrosalfings on the left side so that is the thickened tube here on the right side and when you come to the left side there is hydrosalfings these are the varying appearances so here in the dry type there is no ascites and uh, this is in a girl young girl abdominal scan you see the hydrosalfing with thickened fallopian tube or you may see a mass involving the hydrosalfing and the ovary a peritoneal thickening so it can be a tube ovary mass or a tube ovary abscess now with healing with fibrosis there may be sequelae of uh, tuberculosis of the fallopian tube resulting in a hydrosalfing or in a tubal block so when there is tubal block there will be infertility to assess tubal block we do uh, saline infusion sonography the cis which shows a normal spill on the right side indicating patent tube whereas on the left side there is no spill indicating that there is uh, the left fallopian tube is blocked intermittent tuberculosis is seen in 50 to 80% of uh, uh, cases uh, which shows uh, there the pathology will be irregular contour of the endometrium due to the granulomas and ulcerations and uh, results in a polypoid endometrium on ultrasound it can lead to synecy with um, healing scarred uh, cavity of asherman syndrome as a result of tuberculosis and uh, rarely there may be endometrial calcification because of the scarring of the endometrium it can result in secondary amenorrhea and infertility so here you see the saline infusion sonography in a patient with infertility you see the thin distension of the uterine cavity with polypoid uh, uh, irregular contour of the endometrium and uh, the synecy formation 3d reconstruction with cis you see the uh, addition in the uterine cavity in the form of synecy or there may be extensive scarring of the cavity which may uh, result in a uh, failure of distension of the uterine cavity with cis and uh, there may be endometrial calcification as seen here you see the endometrial tiny punctate calcifications in the endometrium which is again a non specific with other things you come to a conclusion but it will result in amenorrhea so in differential diagnosis of uh, female genital tract tuberculosis is non specific pelvic inflammatory disease and endometriosis and um, the diagnosis is when you suspect um, tuberculosis diagnosis achieved by culture of menstrual blood or endometrial biopsy or culture for tuberculosis and laparoscopy and biopsy thank you very much